All right, it's time. Uh, welcome again. Welcome to Zabbix uh, 6.0 LTS workshop. This is like the second workshop uh, available and uh, there are more available. Just go to zabbix.com forward slash workshops and you can register for another ones. But today's topic is uh, creating triggers for baseline monitoring and anomaly detection. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Iger Skadetis. I'm technical support engineer and, in Zabbix, and today I have the honor to conduct this webinar for you. Uh, let me set some, some, some baseline for, the, for this workshop as well. Uh, so all uh, audio for you is uh, totally muted. Uh, if you feel to make some noise, use the chat. If you feel you have some question in mind, use the dedicated Q&A section. So uh, the, we will answer all the questions there. Uh, also, uh, a common question uh, during the slides is, uh, will you, uh, are you able to receive a copy of this presentation somehow? And the answer is this presentation will be available at the website uh, very soon as a PDF file. And the next common question is like, will this video will it be available? And the answer is yes, but you will need just wait uh, like uh, three weeks or something. All right, uh, let's jump on the topic. So uh, it, during these slides, I will talk about two main things. One is anomaly detection. And this is, I think it's uh, more easy to understand. And uh, we will start with anomaly detection. And then at the end, we will end with baseline monitoring. And uh, also, I will show the live instance how to create a few triggers, so like what uh, how to parse the fields because there are a lot of fields to configure and I, I will explain what kind of uh, uh, input we need to put there. All right, uh, the first thing is anomaly detection. And uh, what is anomaly detection? Uh, anomaly detection works by going through the historical data and looking for the values which are uh, kind of off like which are out of the normal and uh, it, this means that uh, in order to succeed with this detection method we we need to have uh, normal graphs all the time uh, here like the the keyword normal uh, is in the double quotes like what what is the meaning of the normal uh, because uh, the graphs will usually contain some pattern uh, like on mondays the memory usage may be bigger or temperature something like that like there will be always some patterns and that is uh, the pattern is the thing like uh, considered as normal. And if you kind of shift off the pattern, that's an anomaly. Uh, all right, uh, long-term analytics. What is meaning of, of that? Uh, like Zabbix works with trend data. Uh, it means that uh, all the statistics will be calculated by using trends and trends is data uh, like hourly data it's uh, we, we cannot go to the minute to the second so this functionality really works with the hourly data if we analyze one day then there will be 24 data points because we have 24 hours in in that day uh, all right and um, uh, Zabbix uses STL decomposition algorithm. And uh, uh, th there is kind of like, uh, like uh, I would say elegant uh, attachment to this, like uh, because this algorithm has been used in statistics and uh, like other database engines or uh, other applications are using that uh, as well. And it is a very standardized algorithm how to detect the anomaly. If you, uh, so if you are familiar with this, you can really compare the data from Zabbix with some other online tool just to see if that Zabbix detected the problem according to the plan. Continue to the next slide. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, this is the stuff, the STL decomposition algorithm. And uh, what I want to highlight, uh, like uh, the first graph is considered like as a data input, like Zabbix is collecting data and then it's generating trends on an hourly basis. So this is like Zabbix trends. And this uh, guy, the algorithm, uh, it, it will generate other free perspectives how to look on this data. And uh, we don't need to understand uh, like, what, like what, what's the meaning of each perspective because uh, at the end of the day, Zabbix will use only the last one. Uh, it's called remainings and uh, like what's left uh, by executing this algorithm. And uh, these remainings are already highlighting the damage uh, in the infrastructure. You see here is the spike and these remainings is highlighting the, the damage. And uh, so what Zabbix trigger wizard will, will uh, allow us is to define some periods, how many dots we are looking in the time frame. So that's the wizard is, and uh, uh, you can decide uh, what is considered as anomaly for you. And then you just fill the fields and use the trigger logic. Uh, going further, uh, in order to proceed with the, the trigger, we also need to understanding the meaning of deviation. So deviation is a measure of a data variability, uh, which means like how far values are from average. Uh, so this is uh, uh, really used to to really uh, seek for for those uh, remaining points uh, how, how far they are uh, all right uh, and uh, there there are um, zabbix uh, will represent also like four type of uh, ways uh, four type of deviations how to determine there is like default one uh, which will be used uh, quite for everything but uh, uh, at the side note uh, we can still choose like some other ones uh, which is also implemented okay and now the uh, the first uh, trigger wizard uh, like uh, i will show also this uh, screen inside the live instance how to fill the fields uh, but right now i will uh, like describe what is happening here uh, so the trends uh, as i told uh, let me draw some picture uh, maybe uh, as I told, uh, so we need to have some input data. Here is avail evaluation period. Let's say we have the period and this guy like 28 days is the evaluation period. Uh, we are looking for, uh, for the remainings which are off. And period shift, uh, here we can go into the past if we, if we prefer, and then the detection period. So these are 28 days, but uh, if we fill one day here, so it will seek the problem uh, somewhere around in this place. Uh, so this will be one day. Uh, we use 28 uh, days for the input, and we seek for these remainings in this block. And uh, this uh, field like seasons, uh, it means like these 28 days is actually four weeks. And uh, because usually there is some pattern, uh, like uh, some human behavior, how the humans are uh, using the application, they are not using the application during, during the night, then this seven day stuff is useful. Uh, if we deal with the human behavior, I would say. If we deal with some temperature sensors, because uh, like the, the temperature in the room uh, must be like uh, quite constant. Uh, if, every, if all the equipment works according to the plan, then most likely the season will be one day, not seven days. But if we deal with uh, human behavior, then, uh, then, then we use that. Uh, all right. Uh, going uh, further to the next uh, slide to highlight. Uh, so this trend function, uh, it, it, it's using those, uh, those attributes for the input, like analyzing uh, four weeks uh, and uh, uh, detection period is uh, one day. And uh, so it will analyze uh, some like weekdays. And in the output, this function will, uh, 
will produce a decimal number. But just to have some uh, some uh, better human explanation, what we really are comparing. Uh, uh, in in short, I can tell like. Uh, uh, let me draw again. In, in short, I, I know, uh, we are analyzing one day. It's very important. Like uh, since we are dealing with trend data inside this one day, there will be 24 data points, 24 hours. And this number is uh, typed also here. And uh, this uh, one divided by 24 is, is uh, telling the monitoring software, I care about if the damage is like one uh, anomaly. Uh, then uh, the trigger will fire up. Uh, if you care about two anomalies in the time frame of one day, then just write the number two. And uh, like if we study the documentation or uh, I don't know, uh, uh, look somewhere then uh, by using the calculator one divided by 20, oh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, one divided by 24, uh, it's some decimal number. So, uh, and this was, it, it's like the expression is kind of expecting to use this stuff out from the box, but uh, it's kind of uh, confusing. And since the trigger is still uh, capable of uh, calculating something, you can like forget the decimal number and just write this, uh, uh, these uh, uh, hours uh, and, uh, uh, just set set the the scope. What how many animals you care about? Uh, maybe some questions arise instantly, like why such manual work, or um, like since this number is very similar with uh, this guy, can can we not uh, can we not automate this? Uh, my answer is no. Uh, if you uh, select uh, if you seek for two days, let's say then you will uh, need to write like five uh, divided by uh, 48. Uh, so you really look on detection period. And then uh, if you want to ease up the calculation, you don't want to use calculator, you just write uh, one divided by uh, the data points in the day. All right, uh, let's go uh, further. Uh, deviation algorithm. And uh, here comes, uh, <laughs> I like, uh, if there are some some persons who has a, a high degree in the mathematics, then uh, uh, they probably understand this very much. Uh, I did like Google the meaning of these guys, median absolute deviation, like the human explanation, what the algorithm actually does. And there, here, these are the explanations, like a robust measure of the variability of the universe. Uh, univariate sample of uh, quantitative data and uh, some other algorithms uh, is, is like using some other method to to find those uh, deviations. Uh, here, if we look on this star, like uh, the mandatory field, so deviations, um, it was actually in the previous slide, uh, you can leave the field empty, but it will use the number free as the default, like uh, if uh, like free deviations uh, is considered as normal. Uh, if you want to have different scenario, just fill the number and uh, you're ready to go. Uh, okay, uh, going further, uh, concept of season. Uh, this field, like uh, I, I did uh, bring up this topic a few slides ago about talking about uh, human behavior and temperature. And this slide is dedicated to summarize the, the scope of you, just to open you a perspective how we must uh, configure the trigger. And uh, here, uh, like uh, some, like if uh, all days are the same, and uh, my example was temperature or humidity uh, in, in the room, uh, usually the temperature must be constant and then uh, the season will be one day. Uh, if you care about weekdays uh, and uh, deal with human behavior, how many sessions the terminal server is uh, uh, having uh, like open, how many users are visiting the website, uh, then uh, most likely we will deal about uh, weekly uh, scale. And uh, there are also like use cases uh, like imagine you, we have a factory which works 24/7. There are uh, like 
uh, workers uh, working in uh, shifts and like one shift is uh, eight hours most likely there will be three seasons and if we want to monitor the equipment in the factory then the session will be eight hours i believe uh, to really start to track and align some uh, how the equipment performs uh, and all, all that uh, stuff and uh, uh, like the monthly stuff is also supported like you care about first date of the month like uh, maybe monitor atm equipment when the the users are uh, like receiving salary and uh, they want to have like cash in the hand and they they uh, like after the first date they they go to the atm machine and uh, like print some money uh all right uh and uh, in conclusion uh, about the anomaly uh so to recap how it works uh Zabbix collects the data, uh, it collects the raw data, and we have to have trends in the database. Uh, there's an option like to not uh, calculate trends. It means uh, we cannot use this functionality. Uh, and there is also like uh, another option to not collect, uh, to not store history in the database, but calculate trends and uh, store in the database. It, it, it's, it sounds quite, odd and almost like not possible, but uh, trust me, it, it, uh, you can set historical period zero, but uh, for the trends, uh, you set the trends, so the raw data will be collected, will be kept in the memory, and every hour it will install like a data point in the database. Okay, and once we have that data, we are using this uh, SD, uh, this algorithm to decompose those other three dimensions to get the remainder. And this remainder is used inside the uh, Zabbix monitoring software to determine like uh, uh, the anomalies. Uh, and then we, we are using like a very specific algorithm to, to calculate this, uh, this problem. Uh, and uh, the end, we can finally uh, set the trigger threshold, uh, how many anomalies we are really considering as, uh, as a bad behavior. Uh, all right, uh, this was the first topic, uh, anomaly detection. Let me uh, browse the live instance to show you how it works. Uh, so this is on the screen, it's a 6.0 installation. This functionality is available only in the 6.0, starting with the 6.0. And uh, here we are having like the stock Linux template uh, with the uh, 41 item with 14 triggers. What I will do, I will open the triggers and click the button, uh, create trigger, uh, set the severity and click the add button. Uh, so item, um, there is actually, <laughs> there is a nice layer on the top uh, in, inside the front end, which is uh, the way how it's supposed to be. Like if you select item, which is not integer or floating number, the functions will not be available. Uh, and uh, you know, you can accidentally set, create a new item. Like, you know, you, it collects the integers, but you store those things as a text <laughs> so that will not work out uh, you really have to uh, collect the information as integers or floating numbers so i will select one item which i know is like uh, some uh, floating number uh, for example cpu utilization and now uh, we have the historical function uh, under the category history we scroll just a little and we see the the best function anomaly detection for the period t uh, select the function and now uh, filling the the stuff uh, so this is the time frame we want to use for the input and since we are dealing with trends we can really uh, go really use a lot of input uh, it, it will be quite uh, uh, easy to, to calculate, uh, it, it's not too much data points, it's only 24 data points per day. So evaluation period can be even one year. And then uh, like, but it's, it's, it's a lot. Uh, let, let me try to create, um, um, 90 days. Uh, 
period shift. Uh, this is the uh, so uh, out from the box, it analyzes the very end of the period, uh, like if the anomaly is happening uh, yesterday. Uh, so uh, here we will fill the default uh, now forward slash h h and uh, detection period. Uh, we care about uh, uh, like. Um, yeah, uh, we will look for these anomalies in the last day. And uh, let's say this is the temperature stuff, or maybe you are measuring wind in the room, uh, then uh, we will have season as well uh, one day. Deviations, uh, as I told, like if we uh, go to the documentation, then out from the box is uh, uh, free, and algorithm uh, is uh, out from the box, it's uh, mad and uh, this uh, is uh, like uh, uh, you know what uh, I, I will I think I will show how to use documentation or uh, season deviation window uh, uh, so it, it's it, it's it's a window uh, we can also like specify uh, how can I, uh, yeah, uh, let's uh, trends and uh, ah, yeah, uh, I will like go back to this uh, one minute later. Uh, and uh, like the last step is uh, tell how many data points we consider as bad. And so we can write like, I, I think two data points is bad and Together, uh, in, in total, we are analyzing uh, 24 uh, 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 cycles uh, here. Because I did install one day here, I need to use the number 24 over here. Uh, all right, uh, insert. And uh, so what it will do, uh, uh, we can tell like uh, CPU, uh, or uh, anomaly detected. Uh, oh, uh, more precisely, like two anomaly, anomalies detected uh, in the last 24 hours. Uh, here, two anomalies detected in the last 24 hours. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And we like the, the session window was uh, one day. We are, uh, when we say uh, 90 days, then it will, uh, there will be quite a lot of data points for, for the input. Uh, all right. Uh, what I wanted to uh, like show the, the last argument uh, is, uh, uh, I, I want to say like it's quite advanced uh, history functions uh, click and uh, if we search that guy then uh, I, I was unable to tell like what's the last argument and the, my answer is a uh, span in lags of the Lewis window for seasonal extraction and also like the field was not a field uh, but it's taking the uh, number 10. Uh, all right, uh, let's go back to the trigger uh, expression. And uh, yeah, I think that is it, add. And uh, if we look here, um, uh, I, I like to go to the items and search to the search like CPU something. Uh, and uh, I have this guy. Uh, it, this is stock template for the 6.0 and it already contains uh, the stock function, which is using a static approach. So this is this guy is uh, quite constant. When the load is uh, like crossing the threshold, it uh, generates the stuff. And now it also contains like different, uh, more intelligent logic, which will uh, use different approach to determine if the data is off. Uh, okay, uh, that is about the anomaly detection. This is the the 
function to go. Uh, if we care about this uh, functionality, let's uh, navigate to the next chapter, which is baseline monitoring. And uh, what is baseline monitoring? Uh, baseline is a value derived from an average over multiple calendar periods of the same length. And um, usually in, in, in real life, we, we always deal about these uh, periods, uh, weekly periods when something goes uh, off, then uh, li like um, we can analyze the data at Tuesday and really uh, compare the data on the other Tuesdays, uh, like n weeks ago, or uh, not only like, uh, and we, we can go uh, grab four hours, not, we are not forced to use the full day, uh, the four hours uh, may be more uh, logical. Uh, okay, uh, there are uh, properties uh, for the baseline monitoring and uh, we have to understand the concept of periods and seasons, uh, which was also uh, mentioned in, in the previous topic, uh, anomaly detection. And it is quite the same logic. Uh, the season will be always bigger and the period is some smaller chunk inside the season. And there will be a graph in a moment, uh, which uh, describes more uh, the, the, this, uh, this uh, uh, relation. Uh, Average from past calendar period, uh, for example, uh, every Monday of the past uh, four weeks, um, Monday is a period, week is a season. Uh, like, yeah, uh, uh, the Monday is smaller uh, period and week is bigger. And uh, the periods are linked to current time. Uh, this is quite, quite uh, heavy, I would say. Um, uh, like uh, when we use the function, uh, it is kind of, um, you can think it's uh, attached to the today, but it's never attached to the today. Uh, it's always like attached to, to the past period. Uh, for example, if today is uh, Wednesday, then periods are Tuesdays. Uh, okay, uh, let, let's have a look on the graph. Uh, so the bottom of this bold line is uh, seasons. Uh, here, uh, a, a one season is one week, uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, and uh, so we will define again these, these um, uh, like uh, scope of, uh, for, for analytics. And then uh, on the top of that, we again choose a, a very precise, um, period, uh, what we want to real, the, the, let's say that is like working time of the company where the services must be up and running from nine till 5 p.m. So that, that can be selected uh, for a very particular day. Uh, so these two attributes will be used in uh, two, uh, so this baseline stuff, uh, uh, in, in Zabbix, we have now developed two new ways to work with this uh, uh, baseline monitoring and uh, to provide conveniences for the user. And uh, he, these are two functions. Uh, one is very attached to the weighted moving average algorithm. And uh, like this, uh, uh, like it, this is also like a classic, uh, it's available also in the Microsoft Excel, and uh, you can, uh, yeah, th th that that is one way, and uh, and uh, uh, so uh, calculates the baseline. Uh, that that's interesting stuff. Like it it it, it will calculate the baseline, and uh, in in a, a context, I want to say like uh, this is a re replacement for the trigger threshold. Uh, since we uh, previously did specify manually some static number, now it will calculate the baseline. So this can shift uh, like uh, once in a while and, and can be different number. So the uh, monitoring equipment understands what is the, uh, what's considered as a normal behavior. 
And the second approach, it uh, returns the number of deviations. Like when something goes off, uh, it, it, it will just uh, like uh, report the number, report integer, not uh, any floating number, but uh, just the count of uh, deviations. Uh, all right, uh, in the practice, uh, I have here uh, another function and uh, let's have a look on that uh, function in the live instance. Uh, here we go. Uh, go to the triggers, uh, create a trigger, uh, average, add. Uh, again, the item must be numeric. Uh, if we select some text item log entry, uh, it will not even offer that those uh, functions. So uh, select the item, uh, let's have uh, context switches per second. And this comes again under the history section. Uh, so this is the first uh, function, uh, calculates baseline. Uh, like it will de determine like what is uh, your trigger threshold, which is uh, most likely it, it fits on your needs. Uh, all right, uh, what now? Uh, period, uh, how much data we want for input. Let's use again four weeks. Uh, yes. Uh, period shift now divided by H. And uh, now the season and uh, our day, week, month, year. And uh, I, I really, I, I th personally think like most of the times the season season we're looking for is weak. Uh, if we deal with some software uh, which is uh, which is used by by humans, uh, then it will start to generate those patterns in a very particular uh, day. But uh, if we deal about uh, sensors, then uh, like day it is uh, weak. And uh, number of seasons to analyze. Uh, remember that uh, picture in the graph with uh, with with uh, uh, seasons. So uh, uh, ah, I made a mistake. Uh, period. Yes. Uh, how I made a mistake. Uh, period. I, I told like this is the small stuff. Uh, let's go back to the slides. Uh, one, two, period. This guy, I, I just installed 28 days. That's that's absolutely wrong. Uh, so uh, that must be a day or even less. Uh, all right, uh, I will have four hours and um, period. Uh, uh, and do we want to shift? Uh, no, uh, we care about uh, just uh, like the very recent stuff. Uh, and seasons, like the picture was uh, using the weak uh, stuff. And now, like how many we want to have this, uh, uh, in, like input for the analytics and uh, let's say like eight weeks. Uh, all right, uh, now insert. So uh, what this function does is like it detects the new trigger threshold, which can be suitable for you. Uh, but we still need some uh, some logic to 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 observe the recent data. So what we will do, we will erase this guy uh, and add another trigger function, uh, like a classic one, uh, which is called uh trends average uh, trends average and uh like the average stuff for the same period and four hours and no shifting at all uh, and uh, this does not matter uh, insert uh item is missing and context switches per second the same item insert uh, so we have the baseline stuff right now. And we have the metrics, which is currently flying to the instance. And if I want to install some new artificial intelligence, then, okay, it's not artificial intelligence. It's just a math. Uh, we can tell like if this baseline is two times bigger uh, than the current 
metrics which is flying to the instance here two times bigger and i just installed that this part is uh, like the right part is still bigger the current metrics is still bigger than the base two times bigger than the baseline it's it's very bad to create a meaningful trigger title uh what how we can describe uh, uh um uh, uh, so we did use um what was the metric name uh contact cpu switches uh yeah um I, I almost need to write cpu uh switches uh two times more than uh and uh, what we did analyze uh eight weeks uh so eight weeks for the input and uh, let me just open again this picture so we I did have two items. One item is really like this guy, this big, big block, which has the context, what is our normal behavior. And then the other one is like uh, linked to almost like the current moment, uh, the average of the last four hours. Uh, so we are comparing the stuff. Uh, okay. Uh, CPU switch is two times more than um, like, two times more than normal. And uh, like we can tell like eight weeks uh, for for input, like you will not create such trigger most likely, but uh, just to describe what is it's actually uh, doing. Uh, so we, we did use that data for the input. Uh, all right, uh, add and uh, that is it uh, let's have a look switches uh, context switches so this this item actually is not having any trigger uh, it's most likely also like this is not a productive trigger but uh, for the proof of concept it's it's good enough uh, so new trigger has been installed on a on an item which is uh, comparing the baseline with the current stuff and if the baseline is two times bigger uh like uh if if the average is is still bigger than the baseline multiplied by two uh then it's a problem okay and uh, now the the uh, this this trigger function is also uh, introduced and let me tell the last one uh the last one is uh counting deviations and uh it is more easy to understand uh I, I should like include this one <laughs> before the uh, previous function. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's just counting uh, the stuff. And uh, let's have a look in the live instance. Um, triggers, create a trigger, uh, select the severity, select the item. Uh, let's have a number of uh, processes uh here and uh, use the function uh just uh please also like read this uh useful uh wizard it also quite in a very nice way that tells us uh, what what's the meaning returns the number of deviations between data periods in in seasons and the last data period uh, we select the guy uh what is the period uh two hours uh now uh, divided by over and uh let's say this is not human stuff but this uh the previous one was uh, uh days i think and uh, okay let's have the month uh a season is one month and uh, how many we want uh two months for the input um, yeah this is uh this is quite uh and now uh, like since it it reports deviation uh bigger than zero 
uh, then it's uh, a problem. So what this configuration since I put month, uh, so it will analyze the, the same day from the previous, uh, like the two hours, two hours is the period. Uh, let's go back to the picture. Uh, instead of uh, having these weeks, then now the one season is one month. That is like huge. And uh, I did install only two hours for the period. That is a very tiny friction, like one month, two months, three months, and then like two hours for each month uh, has been used for the input. And uh, it will look for these, uh, uh, it will look for uh, deviations over here based on the two hours here, based on two hours here and uh, so on. Uh, so month period, uh, looking for two hours, looking for the stuff which is off, uh, deviations. Uh, yeah, and insert. And now the trigger, like this is much more understandable. Uh, the two deviations detected. Uh, for the interval of uh, two hours. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I'm comparing with a zero. More than uh, one deviation detected for the interval of uh, two hours, but uh, this these two hours is jumping through the trends with very big big jumps uh, two hours from, from the last month and then another two hours from from the month before it's it's selecting a tiny fractions uh, and uh, that is it for this uh, other function which uh, can uh, can understand when when the uh, period right now is uh, off with the context on the uh, past period. Like this function really is calculating the, the damage over here, deviations over here by uh, grabbing the tiny fractions from uh, like from the history and uh, then using the algorithm uh, to see if it is normal or not. Uh, all right, that is it for the presentation. This was the last slide, uh, three new functions in total uh, in available now in the Zabbix 6.0. Uh, now uh, I will have a look on the Q&A section. Uh, can we get the slides? Yes, we can. Uh, I probably missed, it, but what does STL stands for? Uh, I would say the this um, yeah I cannot tell like what this stands for but it's a decomposition algorithm and uh, uh, it creates three other dimensions uh, <laughs> you have to put this these three uh, keywords in in the Google uh, uh, okay. What happens if I use a smaller or larger number in the result? For example, one uh, 12 or uh, one, uh, one uh, by uh, 48. Uh, it's a uh, math. Uh, so uh, at the end of the day, the trigger is really expecting a floating number. Uh, so uh, it will be, uh, like um, uh, how, how to say um, the one twelve is the same as two two uh, forty eight. Uh, it, it's the same. So uh, it, it's it's just related to math. Uh, if you if you start to write a wrong second number, then the math kicks in and. Uh, just uh, the reported decimal number uh, will will uh, be used to, uh, to to select these uh, like how many 
uh, of uh, anomalies you care about? Uh, all right, uh, this was a great question. Uh, uh, what would be the best option to monitor a possible attack with excessive network traffic on an interface? Uh, it is, um, uh, by the way, this, uh, uh, this, this uh, graph uh, was uh, pretty much the same graph when we did introduce the functionality uh, three months ago uh at december and uh it was really uh it was using network interface uh and uh, uh and uh, my answer is the the best function is using trend uh, sdl uh, to detect the anomaly uh can we get also a recording uh, yes you can uh just uh it most likely it will be published in the youtube uh, in the upcoming three weeks or a month. Uh, can we use averages to avoid false positives on CPU from SQL servers running backups? Which would be the best season period settings? Oh, uh, backups, backups. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, if it is a weekly backup, then uh, season must be weak. Um, yeah, I think maybe uh, maybe just for simplicity, uh, you, I don't know. Um, we have also a trigger function which uh, can tell if the CPU usage is uh, high at Friday from uh, 5 p.m. till 7 p.m., then just not fire up. I, I think that would be the fastest and understandable patch for, for the backup situation. Uh, but yeah, I understand the question. We want to like uh, put some intelligence on the top of that. And um, uh, ah, yeah, the answer. So I uh, I'm quite sure that tr uh, this uh, baseline uh, VMA will sit uh, will fit for this backup situation uh, fine, uh, as long as you really have the backups in the very same time always. Uh, it, it does not matter is it like a daily or weekly, but uh, the backup must uh, uh, like must have must be executed in in the very uh, same uh, hour. Uh, yeah, and you asked the season. Uh, so yeah, if the backup is executing two hours, uh, uh, yeah, season is one week, and period uh, will be somewhere close to that period. How how long the backup executes? Uh, maybe multiplied by two uh, to to see the the full picture. So if backup is uh, two hours, then uh, two to four hours will be the period settings. Uh, yeah, uh, so you did uh, an update, it's a backup every day. Uh, then uh, the season is, uh, the season is day and the period is uh, two times the time frame the backup executes. All right, uh, I have answered all the questions from the Q&A session. Uh, thank you very much for participating. Uh, as a reminder, like uh, one more time, uh, there are some other workshops uh, happening tomorrow and uh, another day after tomorrow. Uh, just go zabbix.com forward slash workshops and uh, feel free to register. Uh, those are absolutely for free. Uh, yeah. Uh, another question did pop up. Uh, in which time should be the disk space be checked? Uh, ah, the, I, 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 I start to uh, understand the uh, in which time should be the disk space uh, be check I, I'm not uh, yeah you, you did publish an update uh, when a problem pop up at uh, five percent 
free and a problem is solved when uh, uh, yeah i i feel this question is not really related to the topic uh i i don't see the correlation at the moment i can tell like uh trigger expression is uh recalculated whenever a new metric arrives uh all right, uh, that is it for this uh, session. Uh, thank you very much again uh, for uh, uh, passing by. I hope you will uh, try your hands on uh, playing with these uh, functions. Uh, like uh, uh, this is a very great start because um, these functions are standardized with other uh, softwares available in, in the industry. And um, so we offer a great framework to operate with, uh, which can help you identify problems and uh, not have any like static trigger thresholds. Uh, all right, uh, thank you and uh, have a lovely rest of the day. Bye.